Hi, uh, welcome to Attack with Larry C. I'm Larry Christensen. We're going to devote this uh, episode of Attacking Chess to a tribute to uh, the late Vasily Smyslov, who just passed away, I believe, several days ago, and at age 89. And of course, uh, the former world champion had a major impact on chess. He was a top player, one of the leading players in the world, competing in FIDE cycles for an unprecedented, almost unprecedented, 40 years, starting in the late 1940s, 1948. He played in the famous World Championship Tournament, along with Botvinnik, Ryshevsky, Smyslov, and Max Irva, and uh, was uh, competitive uh, in that match, too. And he was Then he, in the 50s, he became world champion uh, in 1957-58, winning many major tournaments along the way and uh, competing in many cycles. He stayed very strong, one of the top ten in the world up until, let's say, the 70s, early 70s, and then his game started to come decline a bit. But then he made a, a remarkable resurgence in the 1980s. In the 1982-84 cycle, Smyslov made it as far as the FIDE finals match to determine a challenger to then world champion Anatoly Karpov. Smyslov shocked the chess world, winning in succession matches against Robert Hubner, heavy favorite against Smyslov, and uh, Hungarian grandmaster Zoltan Ribley. Now, to be fair, the match with Hubner was decided by the notorious spin of a roulette wheel, but nevertheless, the uh, 62-year-old Smyslov uh, was still quite a remarkable achievement. Now, Smyslov it, is an attacking player, not really well known as a great attacking player. He did have his moments, but in general, he was well known for solid positional play, defensive resourcefulness, and fantastic technique. But he could, when, when the position called for it, Smyslov could attack just as well as the next guy, if not better. And especially famous for some brilliant, very long combinations. Now, one of my favorite Smyslov conclusions was the game played in 1993 in Rostov, Russia, and against Grandmaster Lembet Ol. And uh, this is the position after Black's 27th move. We we see you now Ol has been had been totally outplayed up to this point. And Smyslov discovers a very elegant way to put this game out of reach. So it's white to play. How does he continue? Well, if he continues with a captain obvious, knight takes e5, black plays king f5, hitting the rook, breaking a pin, winning material. Smyslov found a much better solution. He played f4. But he played now, that's a also an obvious looking move, except Black would appear to have a strong reply in again playing King F five, which is what Ol played. Looks like White's F four has backfired. The rook's on, on E four is under attack. Black threatens he takes F four. What did Smyslov do? Well he was a great endgame composer and this position was Taylor, this is really one of his great compositions. Smyslov now played G4 check. And I'm all may, may have almost fallen out of his seat here after G4 check. Well, of course, now King takes G4. We have F takes G5 check, winning a piece. But what happens after King takes E4? Well, Smyslov now played Knight F2 check. King takes F4. Now the quiet crusher, Rook G1 threatening bishop d2 checkmate. Black has only one answer to bishop d2 mate, and that is e4, but then after e4, white has knight h3 mate. Very elegant, classic Smyslov. Uh, elegant finish to uh, a fine positional effort. Now, Smyslov was, when the occasion required, required it, quite a uh, powerful attacking player, 
And when I was a young GM in the 80, early 80s, I followed closely the matches uh, between Smyslov and Hubner and the Smyslov and Ribley. And uh, now the following game against Zoltan Ribley showed that uh, Smyslov had uh, rediscovered the Fountain of Youth. Very fine attacking game. Here we go. This is London, 1983. Not a perfectly played game, not the greatest attacking game I've ever seen, but it was actually a uh, very energetic play, aggressive play, surprisingly aggressive play by Vasily Smyslov here. And that may have taken Ribley off of his game. Okay, Smyslov uh, was a versatile opening player. He was not a, he also, although many novelties came to his credit during his long career, he was not well known as a great opening expert, but quite versatile. Okay, now we have the semi terrace variation of the Queen's Gambit declined. Also, Bishop C4 here is a, is a reasonable move. And White plays A3. Now, that's to keep the a Black Knight away from B4. And... Um, White has other alternatives there. But A3 is perfectly playable. Now black reduces the tension. C takes D4, E takes D4. And black plays bishop F6. And here white has a number of choices. Bishop E4 is a move. I think knight E4 is a try here. And also the move that Smyslov played, queen C2. Attacking the pawn on H7. Now black plays knight takes D4, knight takes... Bishop takes, bishop takes h7, check king h8, bishop e4. Now, usually it's it's a good trade for uh, to trade a center pawn for a wing pawn, but in this case, the effect on black's king is too severe. I would take white. Very fine attacking chances. And g6 is also playable, but uh, that may allow white, white to develop with a tempo. Bishop h6, then if rook e8, Rook AD1 is, uh, gives White a nice game. Again, ID4 as well is also playable there. So Ribley made the perfectly logical choice of playing H6, although this is not a recommended way of handling that type of threat. It does create later on the opportunity for White to set up a battery. Queen and Bishop, White can reposition the Queen up to E4. That can be uh, rather effective. Okay, so now uh, Smyslov protects his uh, pawn on d4. A very, just a modest move like bishop e3 is reasonable as well. But nothing wrong with rook d1. And again, here, bishop e3 I think is called for. Queen b6, uh, knight e7 would have been a good alternative. Queen b6 uh, not doesn't really get my vote compared to uh, knight c7. But uh, now here Smyslov starts to, uh, he plays a little tentatively at this point. Well, bishop c4 is okay, but uh, I think really just simple, solid development with bishop e3 it looks looks better. But uh, he played bishop c4. Now the idea behind that was to clear a path for the queen to get to e4 and set up the aforementioned battery bearing down on h7. And now here, Black, if he responds to the threat of taking on d5. Well, knight takes c3bc really benefits white a lot more than Black. It's got a strong pawn center suddenly. The t4 pawn is no longer a source of counterplay. White has a nice, nice free open hand, a lot of options. Pleasant for white. Uh, he played instead rook d8 to support his uh, well-posted knight. He's not... Uh, Going to take away, take off the table his strong pressure uh, against the pawn on d4. Now Smyslov played knight e2. Now this a little bit, a little too much of a light touch, knight e2. He had uh, other perfectly good alternatives here. Again, bishop e3 looks like the right move. Just solid development. And then black may have to confront the possibility of knight e4 to c5. That's a well-known theme in such positions. Quite effective, I might add. 
I think after Bishop E3, I would say White has a slight advantage. But uh, 992 is just a little on the passive side. But it does have one nice attacking mo- motivation. He wants to bring the knight on G3 over to H5, where it can be make uh, quite a nuisance of itself. That's basically Smyslov's idea here, besides protecting the pawn on D4. But again, Bishop E3 looks like a better move. Okay, his Ribley sol- continues solidly. Bishop D7, getting his rooks connected, and here's and Smyslov starts getting aggressive. It puts it's a forcing move. It threatens to win a pawn, and sets up our battery with Bishop D3. Ribley answers correctly. Knight E7, also that Bishop. Looks forward to uh, playing bishop c6, b5, or a4. All three nice nuisance squares. Squares where they can upset white's plans. Well, Smyslov now sets up for the check on h7. Not a mating attack so much as a basically putting the black king under fire. It's well defended. We have... Knight coming to g8 if white tries to check too many times. But the fact that the queen is down there with plenty of uh, supporting cast creates tactical possibilities. Now here, Ribley starts to fade a little bit, perhaps not accustomed to seeing his older opponent play so aggressively. And he played here bishop a4, allowing the queen h7 check move. Now, a better continuation would have been knight g6. No question about it. And then if h4, that looks like the logical reply, then black can deftly sidestep problems. He plays bishop e7, and now h5 is no good because the knight f6. Winning a pawn. Black has a good game after bishop e7. And after knight g6, uh, basically white's formation is not uh, very effective here. Knight g3, black plays bishop c6, and white suddenly on the defensive. But Ribley played uh, the less than, although not from far from losing, as a matter of fact, black still has at least equal position, but uh, rather accommodating bishop a4. Not as good as knight g6, and now Smyslov takes advantage of the lapse by bringing his queen in. It's dangerous on its... He does have dangerous possibilities uh, with that queen in there. King f8, and now he plays rook e1. So he's uh, basically calmly waiting for his chance. A queen h8 check, knight g8 is going nowhere. Okay, let's let's get right to it then. Uh, so after rook e1, bishop, he played bishop e5 to eliminate that dangerous-looking bishop on d3. And uh, he played, now bishop e4, black can actually eliminate potentially dangerous knight on e2. Bishop takes e2, rook takes e2, rook a, c8, black has an uh, excellent game here. The queen's flying solo here. One, the queen all by herself really can't do much. Queen h8 check, knight g8, bishop h7, uh, king e7. It's starting to look a little ridiculous. White's attack is... Uh, looking very amateurish indeed. So, uh, white has to take. And he, now he brings the knight on g3. Okay, so black uh, faces a serious attack. White has ideas like knight h5 in the, in the woodwork, knight e5. What should he do? I think probably black should play knight g8. That looks like the safest uh, defensive move that uh, eliminates the problems of associated with bishop takes h6. It stops checks. King on e7 has a uh, outlet if need be. Um, then and white black's plan is would be then to follow up with rook a c8. And here's a let's look at a sample variation after knight g8. Uh, let's try the aggressive knight h5. Rook a c8. Bishop d2. In some positions, it's useful to get get a check in on b4. And now, how does 
you know, to be safe about matters, maybe it's best to uh, bring the queen back, maybe queen d7, uh, just to get the queen in uh, better shape and um, put pressure against d4. Queen a4 is an alternative. But uh, looks like black is pretty solid. White can't, White's reached his maximum attacking potential here, and it uh, looks like nothing much is going on. If then, let's try knight e5 for white. Black can play suddenly queen a4, and white's got all his nice attacking pieces ready to go, but suddenly black has counterplay against, against d4. I don't think white can make any serious progress. And black has queen c2 now ready. Okay, so instead, after knight g3, instead of knight g8, which looks like the most solid continuation, black played knight g6, and uh, that uh, is not as well, it's not as strong a defensive move. And here, Smyslov takes his opportunity, plays knight e5. Comes with a lot of threats. And also, it meets black's intention, a possible intention, of playing king e7 and rook h8. That's no longer possible. If black now plays bishop takes d e five, then the g seven pawn becomes fatally weak. White's going to play knight h five. Now, if black tries something like queen a five here, white plays knight takes f takes b four, queen a four, where queen takes g six, and uh, clearly white's got the upper hand here. Rook's ready to come to e two. Sacrifices are possible on h6. Uh, Black's in big, looks like he's in big trouble. So 95, definitely after this, Mislav has the initiative. Hard to say what Black should do, uh, but the game continuation, quite instructive. He played knight d e7. Okay, so here's a great Smyslov combination, about 10 moves deep, ready to go. He starts out with bishop takes h6. Well, that's obvious enough. First order of business, if g takes h6, we have mate and one. That's easy. If black plays, um, well, then with the game continuation, that's the uh, the most complicated. That is, knight takes e5. If black plays bishop takes e5, white can play rook takes e5. Knight takes e5. Queen takes g7, check. King e8. D takes e5. White's compensation here for the exchange is massive. So let's look at the game continuation, which was knight takes e5. Okay, knight takes e5 looks great because d takes e5, bishop takes e5, leads to nothing special at all for white. Black's well centralized. g 7s adequately defended. Looks like uh, black's okay, but... Smyslov now throws in the unexpected knight h5. Now, first of all, if g takes h6, that leads to mate after queen takes h6 check. King any, knight takes f6 mate. Or bishop g7, queen takes g7 check, king e8, knight f6 mate. If knight f5, white wins with knight takes f6, Knight takes h6. This is a d takes d takes e5. Even better than rook takes e5. D takes e5, and Black's in major trouble. He's white threatens queen h8 check followed by queen takes g7. Then there's really no defense, and that leaves the game continuation, which was knight f3 check. The knight was going to going anyway. It was going to be lost, so he decides to give the piece back as dearly as possible, at least to uh, create some problems with White's king. And now Black played knight f5. Also, there's no d no pawn on e5, creating a huge cramp on the Black king pos king position. Okay, after knight f5, Smith's Law played knight takes f6. And black played knight takes h6, so it's calmed down a little bit. But it looks like um, black, you know, it's black's queen is ready to go to g5, and things are settled down a bit. Black is only a pawn down, and white's pawn structure is less than perfect. 
But Smyslov had seen that uh, the attack is continuing as he, in fact, he jump starts it here with the powerful advance d5, a move he no doubt had foreseen way back when he played, probably when he played 22 bishop takes h6. And this is a classic cutting in half the communication of the queen from the king's side. Those squares are no longer available. The pawn itself has a powerful effect on the black king, threatening pawn takes e6. So now black's choices are rather very limited. He's actually played queen takes b2. It's probably his best bet. Not easy to refute, but Smyslov was up to the task. Suddenly, if pawn takes e6, threatening e7 check, black is can just simply reply f takes e6. And uh, everything's covered. All bases are covered. Black has counterplay. Rook takes e6. The rook on a1 hangs. And uh, knight h5 is answered by adequately by uh, rook d5. Black can launch a counterattack. The queen defends g7. That's not quite good enough. <clears throat> After queen takes b2, though, Smyslov found the right way to go. He played queen h8 check. King e7, and now, very important, rook takes e6 check. Another sacrifice, and force f takes e6, queen takes g7 check, knight f7. Here's the real key to the combo. It's not knight g8, double question mark. Rook takes g7, and suddenly the queen's pinned. Black wins, but he first diverts the rook, plays uh, d6 check. Clears the way, actually, for knight d5 check. Key move. Now, if king takes d6, 94 check, wins the queen back very cheaply. Black at least played rook takes d6. But after knight d5 check, rook takes, queen takes b2. White had a decisive material advantage. Mainly because this pawn is weak. White has pass pawns on the king's side. And uh, the queen here is an open board vastly superior to the rook and knight. And Smyslov's technique here is quite impressive, though. Black tries b6, check. Now he puts pressure on the rook upon e6. Ribley uh, attempts to create some counterplay against the h2 pawn, the white king positions. Smyslov is uh, up to the task. He's just very logical every move here. Now he lifts the rook, prevents rook d4, pre prepares king g2, prepares rook f4 check. Ribley tried knight d6, check, e5, and now simple, uh, simplifying liquidation combo, f4. And uh, now if rook e8, f takes e5, check will win more material. So black now is... Uh, down queen and two pawns against rook and knight. It's totally resignable. Check. And here black resigned. Three pawns on the king's side, too many. So that was Smyslov in 1983, and unfortunately in, uh, he lost rather decisively to Kasparov, but he continued playing actively in chess way up until his 80s, and he was still quite a... He was beating GMs until his 80s, that's for sure. So a chess legend, Vasily Smyslov, gone but not forgotten. His games live on, of course. Okay, thanks everyone for joining me. Uh, we'll probably I'll probably find some more uh, classic uh, Smyslov attacking games. It'll be in um, upcoming attacking shows. One, uh, he's, he played some great games with Ryshevsky, Irva, Carries, of course, Botvinnik. Not to mention. Um, some of the uh, the Boyevich had a nice game. Ullman, there's a great game between uh, Smyslov and Ullman, 1971 in Moscow. I think Smyslov was black in that game. I mean, it's just a huge selection of classic Smyslov attacking games. Hi, this is Grandmaster Damien Lemos. First of all, I hope you enjoyed um, this video. If you would like to receive more free chess videos from us, you can just click the subscribe button below. I would also highly recommend signing up 
for my free mail course, The 10 Grandmaster Secrets to Dominate Chess. During this exclusive course from OnlineChessLessons.net, I'll share with you my own Grandmaster shortcuts to effective attacking, defending, and growth hacks to improving your chess without um, complicated books or memorization. So sign up by clicking the sidebar on the right and I know you won't be disappointed. Once more, this is Damien uh, for OnlineChessLessons.net and I'll see you um, in my videos. Thank you.